Alright, so this is our main page that you'll see when you do get in here. So we'll get into these 10 little fun buttons in just a minute, but the first thing I want to take some time to talk about our support. So has anyone been able to, that who is currently using the program, uh, reach out to support at all? Yes. Yes. How is your experience so far? Good. Fantastic. Good? Really. All right. <laughs> so our support team is huge because we do not, we're, we're really different than other support teams because we don't dread you calling us. We actually encourage you guys to reach out to us versus your admin. So I know that you guys were saying when we first got on the phone that you want to be able to answer questions, but you can always push your agents to support because we want to be able to answer the questions you can. And the fastest way you guys can get a response is by clicking on this live chat button. So we're in Sacramento, California, so we're fairly local to you guys. And, you know, once you click on this button, a live support member will pop up. Just type in your email address and then your question and click chat with us. And you can just chat back and forth with whatever question you have. And then there will be a call me button once you click chat with us. And you can call their direct phone number to that live uh, support member if you want to. Then, if you guys want to just research your question, you can just type in a question in the search bar. And it'll, it'll pop up a bunch of articles that you can read on. Then we have a Sky Soap manual, which will, it will be a step-by-step -step guide that will take you through our whole platform. Also, if you guys have iPhones or iPads or anything like that, any smart devices, there's a bunch of tips and tricks on how to use those in this manual as well. Then we have video tutorials. So if you guys just want to watch a short one to two minute video on how to do something, maybe upload a listing or get a document signed, anything like that, a ton of videos are in there you can watch. Also, if you guys have any ideas that you want to maybe implement in our program, you can always click on Featured Suggestions and submit those ideas. We are constantly uh, listening to your guys' feedback and updating our platform to fit your guys' needs and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be our support. Brittany, before you go on, you yeah. mentioned something about an iPad. What was that information about? Yeah, basically what I was saying is if you click on the SkySoap manual, there's a bunch of tips and tricks in here if you're using an iPhone or iPad and how to get how to navigate through the system with okay. those devices. All right, perfect. Yeah. Thank you. So, I mean, obviously, yeah, you're welcome. So, obviously, when you're on your iPad, things are a little different because you can't double click with an iPad. So, there's mm -hmm. certain things that um, it'll be a little different when you're on an iPad versus on a desktop or a laptop, anything like that. So, there's a bunch of tips and tricks in there. And a lot of people are um, changing over to those iPads, so that's like really big right now. So that's going to be our support. But then we have our My Sky Soap. So when the new users log in, they'll have a big box that will pop up that says, please set up your, you know, welcome, set up your uh, My Sky Soap account. So you're going to go ahead and click on the My Sky Soap. And this is going to be like your personal profile. So once you set this up once, you won't ever have to set it up again unless some information were to change. But for the most part, it'll automatically fill in your first and last name, and then we recommend you put your phone number here. That's how if we have any questions and we are getting disconnected with you on a live chat, we can just pull your number and give you a call. And you always want to click Submit before you move on. That way it says it's been saved successfully. I'm just going to follow these tabs up here so I know where we're going to go next. So I'm going to click on Notifications. So here you can set any notifications to be sent to your email. So, for example, if I check this box, I'll be notified this many days before a listing expires. So, this would be good if you wanted to turn in any extension paperwork for a listing. Uh, that way, you'll be notified a certain amount of days ahead. So you can just erase that to a different number if you want. And then, notify me when a listing goes past the expiration date. You could check that box as well. Then, we have the same thing down here, but for transactions. So, you guys may call them uh, pending sales or sales, but on here, we call them transactions. And you can be set a certain amount of days before it expires and then when it goes past the expiration date. So those are email notifications. So next we'll go to signature. So here, if you guys use Gmail or Outlook or anything similar for your work, we always just recommend that you copy and paste your signature from that email to here. That way when you're emailing out of SkySoap, It'll look seamless to your regular email, like it's coming from, you know, your work email. So this won't be replacing your email, but it will at least allow you to send emails out and it won't look like it's coming from Skyslope or from a no reply. It'll be coming from your actual email. 
So again, if you need help setting this up, maybe you want a big fancy picture and you don't know how to get in there, click on the support button in the top right corner and we can do it for you if you need. Next, we'll go to change password. So this is pretty self-explanatory. You just type in your old password and your new password. So everyone's old password will be one, two, three, four, five, six, and then the one that you want personal to you. So that's going to be it for your My Skype So I'm going to click on this logo in the top left corner, and that's going to take me back to the home page. So when you guys log in, you won't see the Skype Soap no paper. You'll see your guys' company logo in the top left. So that'll always be a shortcut to get back to this home page. Then we have the statistics box. So what this is is basically everything that's going on in your account at a glance. So as you can see, I have 20 active listings. I have 21 pending sales and so on. So if you want to view these files, you can just click on these numbers and their live links will take you directly to those files. Any questions before I move on? You're doing good. Okay. All right. So now we'll go to create a listing. So here, this is going to be if you're representing the seller. So you let's say you do a listing presentation for your uh, for, for a client and they decide they want you to list their house. Awesome, you can just go from your pajamas in your room, pull out your iPhone or anything like that, click on the create a listing, and it'll take you through the steps. That so should only take a couple minutes. So for example, this is the listing information. So I'll just type in a, a, a sample one. So I'm just going to press tab on my keyboard and it's going to take me directly to that next field that I need to go to so I don't have to click around. And if you notice, I entered in my zip code, so that's my zip code here in Sacramento, and it automatically filled on the city, the state, and the county for me. So next is the type of listing it is, so let's say this is new. And then here's the listing agent, so that'll be you the agent when you log in. And then we have the co-listing agent, so you can add a second one if you have one. They have the listing price and the year built and the source, but anything you want right there doesn't matter. They have the listing commission, so I'm just going to enter in, you can enter the percent or the flat amount, so I'll just enter in 3%. Then so we have the listing date, so let's say today we want to get this listed. And let's say it expires June 3rd. So here, if you have any additional commission breakdown, you can enter it in if you'd like. If not, we're going to go ahead and click next. So here we have the contact information. So what's nice about Skyslope is once you save, once you enter in any of your contacts, so let's say we use, um, we sell multiple properties for the same person. If you enter their email address, it'll save all their contact information for you. So for example, let's say I type in A and see who I have in here. I have Angelina. So her email and information already popped up for me. So I'm going to click Save before I move on. If you want to add a second seller, you can add new right here. So maybe it's uh, her husband, Brad, you can add him. Go ahead and click Next. And then here's the home warranty information. So it's not required, as you can see, but if you have it, you can enter it in. So I'll go ahead and click Submit. So now we're at the checklist. So your admin on your side will be notified once you've gone to this point that a file has been created. So you won't have to let them know, like, hey, I have a new listing. Can you check it out? Because they'll already know about it. So the, the next thing for you guys to do is just to get your documents into Skyslope. So there's four ways you guys can get documents in here. So the first way is this email address right here. So if you notice, it's Brittany Drive 955 at skyscope.com. So if you notice, it's my the same exact thing as my property. Did anyone have questions? I heard something. Not over here. Must be already. Okay, I heard something. Sorry. Okay. Must be them. I think people are still logging on. Okay. All right. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so like I said, every single time that you guys create a new file, there's going to be an email specific ID for this exact property. So every single time, this guy will already generate an email for this property, any property that you put in. So this serves two purposes. One, it's going to be how you can get documents in. 
And two, it's going to be it's going to be it's going to save all your email correspondence with your client if you choose to, and it's going to be placed in the log, which I'm going to get into in just a couple of minutes. So the first thing I'll show you, I'm just going to copy this email address, and let's say my client sent me a listing packet that I sent to her, and she signed it all, and she sent it to my email. So I'm going to go to my email. So here's my listing packet right here. So I'm just going to click on that. Here's all my signed docs. So I'm just going to forward this to that property address. So Brittany Drive, forward this attachment. And I'll show you where that went in just a minute. But that makes sense so far, right? Just You're just sending an email with the attachment. And it's the document that you attach in this email is going to be placed in my document section. Look good so far? Yes. All right, so now if you guys want to fax documents in, you can do so by clicking this fax cover button. And it's just mm -hmm. going to want you to label your documents that you're faxing in. So you can label them anything you want just for your reference. So I'm going to go and click save and the PDF will be created. So here's my fax cover sheet. Let me zoom out a little. So if you guys have a packet of disclosures, you can just place or print this, doc, print this file out, place it on top of your disclosures, send it to this phone number right here through faxing, and then these our servers are going to read our, these barcodes and put them directly into this property file for us. So that's if you want to fax documents in. So now I'm going to take you to the document sure. section. Brittany, hold on a second. We have a so question. Here is where you can map. Brittany? Okay, go ahead. Yeah. If you fax in a stack of those disclosures, do you still have to go in and separate each one? Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. Yeah, which I'll show you how to do that. If you fax them in separately, then you then it'll be placed here separately. But if you fax them as a packet, then you would just need to split it up. And I'll show you how to do that right now. Okay. So let's say. This is the packet that I just emailed in from my email. I just forwarded it in this listing packet from my client. Or let's say it was faxed in. It would be placed in here. So if you want to separate that packet so multiple disclosures can go on the checklist, you just click the split tool, and it only takes a couple seconds to split up a document versus you having to upload them one by one. You can just upload them in one big packet. The document is going to load on the right side, and I'm just going to start to label my pages. So let's say it's from page one to eight. And I'm just going to abbreviate it since I, I know what it stands for. Agency disclosure. Then we have page 12 to 12, so one page only. And then page 13 to 18. So it's okay if you don't know what pages are what. I just kind of knew it ahead of time. Um, so here's my document. If you want to view those pages, you can just click next and see what pages you need to label. So that's how you can view the document. So now that they're separated nice and neat, I'm just going to click split. And it's going to be placed in my document section, but all separated. So you'll still have that listing packet in full intact right here. Here's the listing packet, but here are all those documents separated separately. So that's if you split a packet up. So the third way you guys can get documents in through this document section is if you want to mass upload, so multiple uploads at once, so click upload documents. So let's say you scanned a bunch of documents to your computer. I would just go to my desktop, and I'm going to copy multiple ones and click open. So I have like five of documents that I'm going to upload all at once. So once you click that, you want to wait until the start upload button pops open so you know you're going to upload them. Because some people like to just upload them and then go to their checklist and they're like, oh, they're not there, but you always have to click that start upload and there will be a little box saying that they're successfully uploaded. So here you can see those are all those documents that I just uploaded from my computer all at once. And again, it's going to be time and date stamped of when you uploaded those, so there will be a log of that. So if you want to email a document out, so from your iPhone if you wanted, you don't have to be at your desktop or your computer to get your documents because they're all going to be saved right here. You can click email. Let's say a client wanted a copy of their listing agreement, so I'm just going to check this box or any other document that I want. Type in their email. So again, I have Angelina Jolie, her email saved in here for me since I've already used her. 
-hmm. And then the subject's going to fill in the property address. You can erase that if you want. If not, you can keep it and then type in a message and click send. And that's going to have your signature at the end of it as well. So again, it'll look like it'll be coming from your regular email and you don't even have to be at work to do it. So that's the third way, so this upload document. So now we'll go to the checklist. And this is the fourth and final way. So as you can see, these are all my required items to get this file, this property listed. So yours will look a little different once you log in because you'll have your requirements. These are just what I have set up in my demo account. So let's say I need this MLS now, it's required. So I'm going to click attach in the right column. And let's say I haven't uploaded, there is no MLS printout in here. I haven't uploaded it yet. So I can just browse directly from my computer by clicking browse file. And here's my MLS printout. I'm going to click open and start upload. And now it's yellow for in review. So the admin on your side will know that there's a document that is in their hands now in the sense of either they accept or reject it. If it turns green, then you'll know it'll say completed. And if they ever left a note, it'd be right here. Or you can always leave a note yourself. Maybe you uh, want to say something about this MLS for now. You can type in a note here, click submit. Then they'll be able to see that note that you leave. So anything you want to put pertains to this document. So we're going to go ahead and keep adding documents. Did you have a question? I'm sorry. Oh, it's okay. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and click attach and finish my checklist for this listing. So this is my listing agreement that we're uploading. So here's my LA, so I'm going to click assign. And then I need my agency disclosure, so click attach. So agency disclosure. If you wanted to view them, you can always double click and view, or hover over and it will load a preview. So that's if you want to see it one more time. So I'm just going to assign. So now it's 100% complete and there's nothing left for me to do here. And you can always still attach documents if it's if applicable and then just write a note or you can just attach it and your admin will still see it. But this is all we need to move on is completing that. So now I'll show you the log section, which I mentioned earlier. This email will serve two purposes. One was getting documents in, and the second was to save all your email correspondence. So it'll be saved in here. So let's say you're emailing back and forth with a client about pricing or about disclosures or anything about your property. If you just CC this property address, it'll be placed in this log section for you. So everything is time and date stamped in here. So you can see starting from the very beginning, I created the listing. I entered in my contacts. Here's the email that I received in. So the email that I forwarded my listing packet, I can view it if I click on that. Then I had email out. So that was the email that I sent out. You can view it as well. If you guys had a phone call with a client, you can type in the comments here or any mental notes that you want to have in here. You can print this log out or email it out if you need verification for any reason. You can also email out of the platform. So if I click email, it will pop open and have me type in who I want to send it to, and it will automatically fill in the subject as the property. You can type in a message. So you don't have to send anything. You can just send a regular email right here. So any questions about the log before we get out of the listing site? No questions here. No questions? Okay. All right. So I'm going to click on the logo and take us back to the home page. And next I'll show you Manage Listings. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this box right here. And if you wanted to ever withdraw a listing, maybe the seller backed out and they don't want to list, they don't want their house listed anymore, you can just single click on any of these properties. So these are all my listings that I have in my account. And I would click withdraw. And it would ask me why are you withdrawing this listing. You can type in a reason or you can just leave it blank. But let's say you got an offer on one of these houses, you can click accept contract. Then it will take you to the sales side of things, which I'm going to get into in just a minute. But this is where you can withdraw or accept contracts in here. So 
So we'll go to create transaction, which is going to be representing the buyer. So go ahead and click on that. And then it's going to, I'll just go through this a little bit. So it's going to be just like on the listing side, but it's going to ask for a little bit more. So here's going to be the checklist type. So depending on which one we choose, that'll determine the checklist that we need for this type of a sale. So let's just say this is a traditional sale. And then the uh, zip code, of course, is going to automatically auto-populate once I enter it in. So we have the type and the class and the source. If there's an office lead, you can say yes or no. We'll say no. Then the closing date. So let's say May 1st. This is going to close the sale price. And then let's say today we want to get that, this offer accepted. So we'll go ahead and click next. Now it's going to take us to the contact page, just like it did on the listing side. So let's see, type in O, and let's see, it's Oprah who wants to sell her property. We'll go next. And then the purchaser, so let's say, let's see who I have in here, Dr. Phil wants to purchase her property. <laughs> you always want to click save before you move on. So click next. And then we have the title, escrow, or attorney, company information. So only one of these areas is required to move on. So let's just say we use, you guys use title companies. Everything's going to be saved for um, me, except for I just need to type in the company uh, name. Super slim. So click save before I move on. Now this is going to be the agent representing the other side. To the oversight and management's perspective, yeah, we've seen that. And save, and move on. And then it's going to be the lend here's the lender information. So let's just say it's NA is a cash deal, so we'll go ahead and click next. And then here's the home warranty, it's not required, but if you have it, you can enter that in. So we're going to click submit. Then it's going to take it to the commission page. So only one thing is required here, which is the sale commission, so we'll enter three percent and if you have a TC involved, you can enter their information here or their fees. Or if you have any additional commission breakdown, you can enter in a note here. Now we have the property details, so the number of bedrooms, baths, that kind of stuff. If you have it, you can enter it in here. So I'm just going to go ahead and click Submit. And then it's going to take us to the checklist, just like it did on the listing side. So the same four ways you guys got documents in, you can do it in here as well. So you can send documents through this Glenn Drive at skysup.com through the email. You can fax documents in. You can upload them in the document section or just directly attach to the checklist. So on the sales side, of course, there's going to be a lot more documents that are required, so I won't go through and attach them. So the one thing that does differ from the listing side from this side is the transaction summary button. So I'll click on that, and then down here it's going to create a PDF for me to click on. And this is going to be a one-page summary of everything on this property. So as you can see, I have my property, seller, purchaser, title company, all that information is going to be nice and neatly on one simple page. So you can print this out, you can save it and email it if you want. So I'm going to be that page. Any questions so far? What is that Hear some chatter. We're good. We're good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and move on. Okay. Now we'll go back to the home page. So next we'll have pending transactions. So this is similar to manage listings, but on the sales side. So I'm gonna click on that. So here are all my transactions. Here are my closed transactions. So if I want to cancel one of these, maybe the buyer could not secure financing, you can just click on one of these properties and click cancel transaction. This is going to ask you why are you canceling this. You can again type in a, a reason there or you can just leave it blank. And then it's going to show you all the incomplete items, the closing date and the log. 
You can double click on these properties and start adding files or anything you want in here. Now we'll go back to the home page. Next we have incomplete checklist. So this is made to help prioritize your day. So you can come in here and see what items, how many items you have for each property and which one's closing the soonest. So it's going to prioritize for you. So you can double click on a transaction or a listing and start editing. So that's incomplete checklist, very simple. So we cancel contracts. So if you guys cancel any listings or transactions, they're going to be placed in here for five years. So you can view those files even years later. Then we have access archives. So if you so these are all your going to be all your archive files. So Anna, correct me if I'm wrong, but your admin will be typically archiving their files, correct? Is that right, Anna? Yes, that's correct. Okay. So when an admin archives a file, they'll be placed in here for you. And then you can just click this download document and it'll download all of those files for this property into one nice simple little zip form. And you guys can burn these onto a CD-ROM or a USB, hand that to your client or, or just save it for your own reference if you want. So again, these will be saved for five years for you. So I'm going to go back to the home page. So then we have reminders. I'm going to click on that. So here you can send a reminder to either yourself or you can send it to a second party at the same time. So let's say we want to remind Oprah. And then you would type in the day you want it to remind, send out to her. So you can have it for tomorrow, you can have it for a week, a month, a year from now, anything like that. So let's say April 1st. You can set the time for what you want to send it to. Type in the property and then the message. And so what's nice about this is when you send that reminder to her, it's also going to send it to yourself. So you'll know that that email has been sent out. So that's that. If you want to, you can even set reminders if you have dentist appointments or anything like that for your reference. So we'll go back to the home page. And we have the working doc section. So here is a free uploading space for you. And what's nice is that again it'll be time and date stamped. And this is how you would upload by clicking upload documents. So you can have as many documents in here as you want. You could split them up as well, just like I showed you earlier. Or if maybe a document was scanned in sideways, you can rotate them by clicking on these arrows. You can also assign them to a checklist. So if I check this box right here and click assign, it will take me to all my properties that I have in my account, and then I'll be able to assign what checklist I want it to go to. So this is private to you. Only you will see these documents. Brittany. Not even your admin. Hey, Brittany. Yeah. Brittany, this is Lance. Um, that little, you made a comment, you got the rotating arrows if a document was scanned in sideways. Um, I did not know that. Okay, so if a document gets scanned in sideways, you rotate it and then you can save it in the proper orientation, or, or how does that, how does that work? Yeah, so let's say, um, let's click the arrow and see what happens. Oh well, this document's not sideways. So well, let's just let's work. pretend. Let's pretend um, it, it is. Really I know. For you, uh, already rotated. Well, let's pretend well, let's that one. Let's pretend it is. Let's just pretend it's sideways. So save it sideways. All right. <clears throat> there you go. So when I click that arrow, it will rotate it for me, and I can click on it and view what way. So let's say I want to rotate this back. So that's what it looks like. It's saved already. So there it is. So if you just hover your little mouse over it, you'll be able to preview it like this. So let's say I want to rotate it back. Now it's back to normal. Okay, so, so just, so I just this. want to make sure I understand this. So, so just by clicking the rotate um, button, mm -hmm. that automatically rotates it to whatever orientation you wanted it to be, and then it saves it in that orientation? 
Was that a yes? Would it be the whole document yes. or you got to do each no, page? Each page. Well, it would probably be the whole document, I would think. Um, I'm not sure. Let's see. I don't know let if see. it's all bulk sideways. Okay, let me upload a packet and see so I can just demo it. So I'm going to upload my listing packet. So here's my listing packet, so I'm going to hover over it. Sometimes if it's really a big document, the hover preview won't load. So let's say I just click on it, so that's what it looks like. And let's see, I rotate it. So it's kind of a, it's like 18 pages, so it's going to take a couple of seconds. Yeah, that's my next question. While we're waiting for this, is this the only place that you can, that this rotate feature applies, or is there other places that you can do this once it's already loaded into the document um, tab? Yeah, um, just in here, like in your doc, in your document section and your property file, the arrow is not available. Wow. I would suggest you make that available so yeah, everywhere. So yeah. Rotates the whole thing. Wow. Yeah, that would be a good suggestion. So Which we do, do have an update coming out um, sometime later this year. And so there'll be a lot of new features in here and um, hopefully that will be one of them. That would be cool. I don't I don't know exactly what it looks like, but I can look into it. But so if you can see my whole document, my whole packet rotated. Yeah. Yeah, you really need to make that available throughout the platform, or at least to have it available on the document side in the individual individual file for the property. Because that's a big, uh, from an admin yeah. side, and I'm sure the agents get frustrated with it too. I mean, we get a lot of documents in the wrong <coughs> orientation, and it's just if it's just that easy to fix it, I mean, that's a huge time saver. So yeah, Brittany, if it's yeah just I hear you saying, so sometimes it's like you don't always know if it is sideways, so what if it's already in the document section, so I get what you're saying. Right, or if an agent scanned it in or a seller scanned it into, uh, emailed it into us in the improper configuration, you know, we don't have to go, you know, redo it and resave it, it's just, I mean, you've already got the buttons set up, <coughs> you could just make those buttons available throughout the platform, uh, huge, huge time saver. And Brittany. Yeah, I'll definitely make note of that. I yeah. If it's just one page out of the 18, you have to split it up then, right? And yeah. then do the one page and put them all back together after? I'm pretty sure, yeah. Well, if you see what I just did, I rotated, uh, I clicked the arrow, and it rotated the whole packet for me. Yep. So right. it would rotate all the pages. Right, but if it's just one page, what I'm saying is At if it's one. just one page, you, you need to split it up. So this one page out of, split the it out of the packet. Out of the working folder, rotate it. And then just rotate that, that one page after you split it up. Case, though, and then group it back, back together. The the yeah, you could. If you, yeah, you could. If you split it and then it's just one page that you want to rotate, then yeah, you could. Maybe one that's upside okay. down or something like that. Yeah. You know, you want to flip that one page. And just what is this down. document All right, used for? What is this area used for? What was your question? What is this area used for? This is new to me. I mean, I wasn't uh, one before. of our, our agents is asking what the area is used for. Basically, just the, what this area is the, used for? The working document folder. Yeah. The working document folder. So what's nice about this is, say, you know, you get a bunch of disclosures or documents for a file, but you haven't even created the file yet, but you want to at least get it in the sky folder. You can at least upload your documents in here, and then maybe a week or two from now, then go and upload and attach or and assign to a checklist once you create the file. So it's just nice because this is like a free like holding space for you guys. So if you don't have to assign it to anything, if you want to put marketing flyers in here or anything like that, you can put in here. Why would you? Or? So if you guys wanted, um, maybe to just email documents into here, so maybe you're emailing uh, to one of your admins or another agent, you can just have, it will be their first and last name at Skyscope, and that's how they'll get in here. So you don't have to just click this upload document, you can email them in through your name and at Skyscope. And just one more time, Brittany, just to make sure I understand, the, the only place 
that this rotate feature is available is in the working documents folder? Yes. Okay. Is there a way to get, and I, I prefer you put the buttons on all of the places, but is there a way to get a, a document that's, let's say for example I loaded something on 123 Main Street, but I made a mistake and that, that mm -hmm. was actually for a different property. Um, but irrespective of that, is there a way I can get a document that's in the 123 Main Street file out of the 123 Main Street file and into the working documents folder and then maybe put it into a different one? Can Basically, can you reverse engineer it and put one back in this well, folder? Well, the thing that you would have to do is you couldn't delete a document. So once it's uploaded, right. like for, um, for legal purposes, right. like our platform won't let you delete that. Only the admin can delete that once you've uploaded, but you would just have to save it and then just upload it in your document section. So, I mean, it, it would be like one more extra step for you to get it back into your working doc section. So, you, so say you uploaded it, you would just click on that file that you've uploaded once it's on your checklist and just click save. Save it to your desktop and just click upload and just upload it back in here and rotate it. And then you can just check the box and assign it to your checklist again. Okay. But I would definitely put that as a suggestion as far as the rotating tool. And I would imagine that it would be placed in other areas once our new design comes out. So if we do upload the wrong file, we have to request it from you. Right. Well, you're not allowed to delete it. I'm not even sure that we can delete it. I know she. Hey, Brittany. Um, we're just kind of talking behind your back yeah. here. Um, we, we upload a file, an agent uploads a file no. or a PDF inadvertently to the wrong file. And, and I do remember now, yeah, you, once it's in there, it's in there for life. You said the administrator can delete that. Do you mean do you mean me as an office administrator or do we have, I thought we had to call you guys to get certain things deleted. Or or does the office you staff administrator show you? Yeah. Well, yeah, no, you don't have to show me. Just like but, from the admin side. Yeah, from, but well, you don't have to show us necessarily. But but the you, in other words, my office administrator could delete that file. So Chris sends an email and says, "Hey, I accidentally uploaded this. We don't we don't have to call you. We can do it ourselves." Correct? Yeah. So when the admin goes in and he'll click on the file that needs to be reviewed, and then you'll see the admin will see once they click on it, they'll see two documents. And then the right column, it'll have two. It'll have like an X on each document, and you can just X out the one that you don't want. No, got it. Okay. And then approve the one that you do want. So yeah. So on the admin side, you can do that. What is it? There's something that we can't delete. What? Well, we can't delete a file. Is that it? Like we just want to no, you can't delete the documents. No, no, I'm talking about from an administrative side. I know there's something that we're not even allowed to delete. We have to call you guys to delete. Is that like an entire file? That. Yeah, I believe. Yeah, I think that's what. Yeah, when you're deleting a whole file because it doesn't want you to delete anything. Like it wants you to cancel it, but not delete it to where right. there's no record of whatsoever. So if anything ever came up, we need to be able to still find that. Right. Maybe if it was for like legal purposes, you know, we just don't want it to be deleted completely to where there's no trace of it. Right. Okay. All right. So, so now we're going to go into the last and final section of the platform. So we'll be done after this. So that is the digital signature. So does everyone uh, use this digital signature, or what do you guys currently do? DocuSign. No, DigiSign. DocuSign? <laughs> yep. Some people use another platform, but some people use this one in SkySlope. Okay. So I'll go ahead and show it then. So we'll go into this digital signature. So what's a little different from DocuSign with DigiSign is, well, DigiSign was, you know, built based off of DocuSign, so they're very, very similar. So what's nice about DigiSign is it's fully integrated with the rest of our platform, which means once you start uploading your documents and all your different property files, they're going to be accessible through DigiSign. So let's say uh, you need a document signed before you even start a file. You can just click on this new button right here. 
and I will take you through the steps on how to get a document signed. So here are all my files that I have in my account. If I click select, then it will let me, once I go to the next step, it will let me choose the files that are in this account, which I don't have any in there, so that was a bad example. <laughs> And then in there. Okay, well, when you have files in your account, you'll be able to choose based off of this, these properties. But let's say you haven't even created the file yet. You just click continue without a property. Maybe you want to get them signed first. Continue. And then you, it'll want you to choose your file that you want to get signed. So you can also get these signed in your document section. And I'll show you. We can go back and you don't have to go through just click on the digi sign. That's only if you haven't uploaded it yet. So I'll click open. And then here's my file. So I'm going to click continue. And this is going to be the email to the recipient. So I'm going to email it to myself so I can show you guys what it looks like to get the document signed. So if you guys wanted to add a second signer, so maybe if it was like a husband and wife, or just whoever two signers need to sign it, you can just click new recipient. And then you can add the second signer. So it'll go to the number two email that you send it to. So first it'll go to me, and once I sign it, then it'll go to my second person. So let's say I just want to send it to myself. Click continue. So maybe I want to get this signed first. So we'll click and drag the options that you want. So let's say we want a date right here. Scroll down, and then I'll grab a signature block. And then let's say we want an initial and another date. If you wanted to, you guys can do a checkbox as well. So maybe you need checkboxes in certain areas. Or if you need a data field, so maybe you wanted to write over maybe a, if there's a, an amount right here, you can change the amount that will be placed on top with the new price. So that's how you would do that. So now that we have a couple signatures on here, we'll click continue and then send. So that was the sixth step to get it signed, so the last final step. So once it's been sent to my email, I'll go into my email and pull it up, show you what it looks like. So here, for my email, here's my agency disclosure, so I'm going to click on that. This is what your, it will look like for your signer. So they're going to click start now. So here is my signature if I want to modify that. So maybe they want to look closer to what their signature really looks like or maybe um, their last name change or if they want to add a middle initial, they can change that or choose a different signature block. And then they just have to agree to these consumer disclosures, click adopt. So they want to adopt this signature, the new signature with my new last name. And then it's going to take us to the documents to get signed. <laughs> so one thing while that's loading I want to show you is let's say that we were in one of our listings. block. So I'm going to click on it and then my initial block, click on that. 
and you can either save or view the document or complete the signing.